be fun to do a little tutorial on painting a watercolour wreath like this and like this. Um, so there are, I think it's six different elements to it. Um, different types of leaves, there's little pine cones, berries, branches. Um, and once you know how to paint them, um, you can then combine them into a circle like this but also you can do all sorts of other little festive things. So you could do um, little place cards to put on your Christmas table um, or gift tags, or you could do a version um, and then laminate it and give it to somebody as a bookmark. Um, and then there's just like Christmas cards, which are always useful. So I'm gonna talk you through step by step how to paint each of the different elements and then you can copy me if you want as I go around um, and paint the wreath. Uh, the brush I'm using throughout, I don't think I mention it in the painting videos, but it's a round tip brush which has got a nice point on it and I use the same brush for all of it. Um, the one I'm using is a size 2 but feel free to experiment and use what you've got and uh, see what happens. So grab some watercolour paper, some watercolours and a brush and we'll get started. We'll start off with the kind of background leaves. So I want my paint quite thin. And the way I'm painting these, oh, I've got bits on my brush. So take your brush, push down and then as you pull up give it a bit of a curve and lift and then just a kind of squiggly line up the other side you can put a line up the center if you want you can drop a bit more into the base of the leaf make it a bit darker so just practice doing some of those press down pull up wiggle up the other side Put some little veins in if you want to. One more time. Push down. Wiggly line up. Wiggly line up the other side. I'm going to line up the middle. And drip a bit in if you want to. There's quite a lot of negative space, but I quite like that look. If you want something a bit more solid, you could do line up like that. And then you can do the same up the other side and just leave a patch in the middle. So push down, wiggle and pull up to a point. Push down, wiggle and pull up to a point and then just dip a bit in there and then as they start to dry if you want to you can put a bit of the darker bit of the middle and the edge. Push down, wiggle and pull, push down, wiggle and pull. For the twigs, I'm going for brown. I'm using burnt umber, but use whatever's in your palette. Now I'm going to just use the very tip of my brush for the twigs and just do some wiggly lines. So just practice doing some wiggly lines. I'm leaving spaces in between because they're nice places to put leaves and berries and things so just have a practice you can vary the thickness a little do some little V shapes coming off you can always add more branches afterwards but we're going to start with the branches so, so for the holly leaves I'm going for a darker green 
So I'm using um, olive green and you can put a tiny bit of Payne's grey or a bit of black in if you want. Um, sometimes it's quite nice to add a little bit of red to your green as well. And then holly leaves have got the sort of jaggedy edges so I'm going to push down with my brush and draw a jaggedy edge and then lift up to a point and just fill that in a little and then I'm going to do it on the other side as well and then you can take your colour and make the line a bit more defined put a line up the middle if you want so you can do them like that or you can just do one thick side and then you can just do a line on the other side depending on what look you're after and then maybe put a line up the middle so you can choose have a practice and a play so this one push down give it a wiggle and lift up to a point push down give it a wiggle lift up to a point and then add some dark bits and then this one just the one side darker. It's nice to have your leaves um, sort of slightly different greens. So if you see the first leaves are quite pale and I've made the holly leaves a bit darker and slightly darker green. Just looks a bit more interesting when they're on the wreath. I'm going to do the pine cones. So I'm going to start off with a kind of light brown. It's just a base colour. And for this I'm going to do a kind of little curve like that and then a little curve like that. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to carry on doing that and leave a bit of negative space in between and they're getting gradually smaller until they come up to a bit of a point. So, curve, push down curve, if you want you can do little dots up the side. So you've got that kind of shape there which is Kind of pine cone shape. Do it one more time. And then I'll just let those dry a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with a darker brown. So I've got a bit of that one's raw sienna there. Um, maybe a bit of raw umber. Again, use whatever browns you've got in your palette because you won't have exactly the same palette as me. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to keep our lines thinner just to give the um, pine cone a bit of shape. So come in at the bottom like that. So we've got some of that paler yellow showing through in places like that, but a sort of darker line underneath. So. And 
I'm going to let those dry a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing again but with a darker colour and a thinner line again. So I'm going in with a bit of burnt umber into that mix that I had before. It might still be a bit wet but and then just some darker lines again and if you want you can add a little bit on the end there and a little bit of a stem coming off put some little dots up the side Now for the berries, I'm going for quite a bright red, but I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to it just to mute it down a bit so it looks a bit more vintagey. And then the berries are pushed down and do a little C shape, so it's, and then just a line on the other side as a suggestion, so it looks like that's the bit where the light's hitting the berry. So C shape a little line and they're all going to be slightly different that's part of the charm c shape a little line it doesn't even have to join up it's not a perfect circle c shape little line and then lastly we've got the kind of fir tree branches so I'm going for a really dark green on these and I'm just going to be using the tip of my brush and it's just some quick lines like that. So thin lines, have a practice, get your hand warmed up. So once you've done all of these, you've then got all the elements you need um, to make your wreath. So decide what size you want it. Um, I've got these sort of ready-made greeting cards, which is what I base the size of mine on. So I've got a piece of watercolour paper um, and you want to make sure that your um, whatever circle you're drawing will sort of fit nicely on there but leaving space around for bits to stick out etc. So you, if you've got a compass you can use that and you can measure it out or you can just use anything that's circular. I've got this roll of tape so I'm, I can see that that makes a, quite a nice size circle and then I've got room on the outside to bring bits out. Um, so what I did for my card was I actually used a bit of brown paper and I just cut it to the same size as this card because I liked having the contrast of the white on the brown, but it's whatever you prefer. So watercolour paper, I'm going to put my, I'm not going to do it right in the middle because otherwise I'm wasting all of that, but I'm going to put it about there and find my pencil and just very lightly draw a circle. But don't do it too heavily because you don't really want it to show in your wreath. It's just a guide. If you have gone a little bit heavy with it, you could take a putty rubber and just very gently soften the line so that you can see it enough to follow it with your branches and leaves and berries, but not so dark that it shows through the watercolour paint. So I've got my pencil circle and I'm going to start off with the twigs. So mix up a brown colour. And then just start sort of following your circle, but with some bits coming off to the inside and the outside. And you can turn your paper and 
these sort of give you a guide. You can always add a few more in later if you want to. This is the start of your wreath. And next I'm going to go with my with these leaves, sort of backgroundy leaves. So I'm getting a bit of olive green, making it quite watery. And then just choose a place where there's a bit of a gap and push down wiggly line, push down wiggly line up the other side. And then I'm just going to add dot in a bit. It's just so that when it dries, it's got that interesting watercolour texture. And then as I do the leaves, I'm going to make sure that I do keep turning my paper. Because otherwise my hand is going to be going uh, in a different direction and the leaves are all going to look different. Carry on going around with those and keeping them sort of fairly evenly spaced. It doesn't matter too much. You want there to be a, some kind of sort of symmetry and balance to your wreath, even though it's very loose. Don't worry if you're going over your twigs, it doesn't really matter. One thing to avoid is putting your hand down on the wet areas, so I often just rest my finger in the middle. And as you're coming round back to the beginning, sort of think about your spacing a little bit if you can. So I've kind of got the perfect place there for one more leaf to balance it. And then I'm going to let that dry. So it's up to you what you go for next, whether you go for pine cones or holly leaves. Um, I would leave the smaller things like berries and the little um, fir branches until um, later because they make quite good fillers. So I'm getting my pale colour and I'm going to choose some spots to put the pine cones in. So I think that'll do for pine cones. Well, for the number of them. So then I'm going to go in with my mid-tone and put the darker shapes into the pine cones. And then I'm going to go for my much darker brown to put the finishing touches on them. So just some thin lines and then maybe a little bit of a stem coming off with a few dots down the side.
and that's the pine cones done. Right, next I'm going to go for my holly leaves, which are a darker green, but not quite as dark as the um, little fir sprigs. Um, and then just sort of look at the layout and where you think they might go. So I think I've got a space here. So I'm going to go... Just sharpened up the edge of that a bit. Holly leaves have got quite sharp edges. You can go over your other leaves a bit if you want to. Uh, so here, uh, where should I put another one? So this is kind of the hardest part, it's just deciding where to put things. So I might put another one here. Just sharpen that up a little. Mm. I feel like I want one coming off there as well. I'm gonna go over that pine cone a bit. And And I think for balance, we probably need one more here. I think that's reasonably balanced. You can always go back and add more afterwards, but I think for the moment that will do. Next I'll move on to the berries. It's nice when you get to add the red bit because it adds that nice pop of colour to it. So I've got my red mixed up ready and I'm going to put one there, so a little C shape, a little line and a little C shape and line. And then the last bit is just the dark um, fir twigs. So go for your darkest green. And just using the tip of your brush. Just put in some little bits like this. So these are really just the finishing any way you think would benefit from it. These little space fillers. Mm, 
just a tiny bit there. And then just have a look at it and see how you think it all sits together. Um, I'm going to put in a tiny bit more twiggage, um, really just because I've got a lot, quite a lot of floating berries, which doesn't really matter, but you can just do that on the bottom of your berries if you want, just to kind of stop them floating in midair. And I think that that's it. If you want to, you can go and you can put some veins into your leaves, but I personally quite like it loose like that. And then you've got the, the variation of the light green and the dark green and the brown and the pop of red. Um, if you've got some gold coloured watercolour, you could put in some little gold dots as well. Um, but I'm going to leave that like that. So the first one I did, I've given the paper this kind of deckled edge, which I quite like. You could get a scalpel and a cutting mat and you could cut around it and maybe cut the inside out. But I'll show you how I did the deckled edge. So I've got a ruler, um, actually a clear ruler might be better so you can see what you're doing. Um, and then I've got this little um, tool for uh, not scoring but for sort of denting making a dent in paper but if you haven't got anything like that you could use like the back side of a pair of scissors or a teaspoon handle something like that something which isn't going to cut the paper but will just leave a mark so I'm going to try and get it square so I want to give it a deckled edge down there. So put my ruler down and then with your tool just press into the paper and then still holding your ruler there, tear that edge. And then you can use your tool just to smooth down and you can see that that gives you a lovely raggedy edge. So I'm gonna do that on all sides. And there we go. I keep any little scraps of paper like that because they're really useful for um, testing colours on or practising. And then if you want to write anything in it, what I do is I use a piece of tracing paper just so I can mark out roughly the amount of space I've got. And then on a scrap piece of paper You can just I've turned it over and I'm just drawing over those lines. So I've just got enough there to see what space I've got to work with. And then on the scrap piece of paper, you can, you can get your writing right. So let's go for a So I know that that fits Mary. And then but it's not very nicely lined up so I'm going to take another piece of tracing paper actually this one might do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace over the Mary And then I'm going to move that so it's sort of lined up nicely with the Christmas. Um, get another pencil if I can find it. And scribble on the back. And 
then take your wreath and line that up. You might want to just stick it down with some not very tacky tape just to stop you moving it. Um, and something you can do to make your tape less tacky is to kind of stick it on your hand and peel it off a couple of times. So it's sticky enough to hold the paper but it's not going to tear it when you move it. And then when you've got your writing where you want it, gently stick that down and then trace back over your lettering. And then you can gently peel that off. And then I like to go in with a fine liner and go over it again. And then if you want to be fancy, you can thicken up your downward strokes. So when you, if you think about when you're writing it, that line's going up and that line's going down. So anything that goes down is going to be thicker. So you can just sort of do a double line and then colour in. And then you can let that dry completely and then you can rub out any pencil marks and then that's ready to stick onto your card uh, and I've used some of this thick double-sided tape and um, just on the back stuck it in the corners because it just lifts it off the paper slightly and then you get a little bit of a shadow which I think looks nice so that one We'll go on like that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it useful and fairly easy to follow. If you've got any questions you can leave a comment below and please do hit the subscribe button um, that way you'll be notified next time I upload a video. If you want to share with me what you've done I'd love to see it. Best place to do that's probably on Instagram. I'm theodora.gould and Instagram's also a good place just to follow along and see what else I get up to. Thanks for watching, see you next time.